Hey guys, welcome to another Gaging Gadgets Restream tutorial video. In this video, we'll be doing a full overview and walkthrough of how to get set up and then use all the features in Restream Live Studio. And if you're not familiar with Restream Live Studio, it is a in-browser tool from Restream that allows you to live stream to multiple platforms at the same time using just your browser alone. So you don't have to have any third-party apps installed or get these things set up. It's very easy to use and you can even use it on a Chromebook. Now in this tutorial, we'll go through all the different features in Restream Live Studio, including how to get it set up and then use it while you're in your live stream. So hopefully by the end of this tutorial, you know how to use everything and you can have a really great live stream from Restream Live Studio. This video is sponsored by Restream, so thank you to Restream for making this video possible. And Restream does have a free and paid version of their service and you can use Live Studio with that. Some of the features in Live Studio do require you to have a paid version. And I'll point those out in this video so you can see the benefits of having one of the paid versions of Restream. And if you do decide to upgrade either to standard or professional, use my link in the description because you'll get $10 off your first month. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Restream Live Studio is compatible with several different browsers, including Chrome and Firefox. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use it in Chrome. But if you're using it in a different browser, everything will be basically the same but you might see some differences in the menus in your browser when you're giving access to your webcam or sharing your screen within Live Studio. So just keep that in mind. Now to get started, you will have to have an account with Restream and you can either go to restream.io or use the link in the description to get there. I'll also have a detailed write-up in case you get lost with all the information about Restream Studio. Before you can use Restream Live Studio, you'll have to add destinations to your Restream account. And these are just going to be the platforms that you wanna live stream to. Now you can have either one. So if you just want to stream to Twitch or YouTube, you can add just one of those and you'll be able to live stream directly there. But you can also have multiple and then do what's called multi-streaming where you can live stream to multiple platforms at the same time. And this kind of broadens your reach. You can build a bigger base of followers and you can actually do this with their free version of Restream Live Studio, which is very cool. So the first thing you want to do is add channels. And these are all the different channels you can add, basically live streaming platforms. And this also does include Facebook groups and pages, but that will require one of the paid versions. But basically all you need to do is go in through this list of channels, select one, then you just need to connect to it. So you need to give Restream access to that account. So I'll go to connect Periscope. Then you'll just need to log into your account on that platform and then give access to Restream through authorizing them. So I'm gonna go ahead and authorize Restream. And then once you're done authorizing, it'll bring you back to Restream, as you can see here, and the new channel will be added to your destinations page in Restream. And you can get there by just going in the left sidebar, and it's the first option. Once we've added all the destinations that we want to add to our Restream account, we can start using Live Studio. And we do that by going in the left sidebar, finding the camera icon, and then selecting it. When you first open it up, it's going to ask you to grant access to Restream for your microphone and your camera. So go ahead and select allow there. And then your camera will come up on the screen. So as you can see now, you can see me just like this. And now that you've granted access to your camera and your webcam, you're kind of set up and ready to go. Now let's go through all the different tools that Restream Live Studio has to offer so that you can get the most out of it. So at the bottom down here, we have some controls. And first we have the mute button for our microphone. So if I toggle this on and off, it'll mute and unmute my microphone. We also can disable and then enable our camera down here. So you can see this in the preview. And by the way, this right here is going to be a preview of what your live stream will look like when it's streamed to whichever channels you've added on your account. So whatever it looks like in here is what it will look like when it gets to Twitch or YouTube, Facebook, anything like that. The next option we have is going to be share screen. So if I select that, my browser will ask me what I want to share. So in Chrome, we have the ability to share either our entire screen, so your entire display or monitor. We also can choose applications or even just specific tabs within Chrome. I'm going to share my browser right here. So I'll select that and then go to share. And then as you can see, it adds it over to the right of the preview. And this is called the spotlight. And then this toggle right here allows me to enable that and add it to my live stream. So if I turn that on, as you can see, it's added it. Now we have my webcam and my screen right here. And the screen sharing is really cool. So as I scroll through, I can point out different things. It shows my cursor. So if I really wanted to like 
show my viewers something on a website, maybe a YouTube video or a blog post. I could go through, I can highlight text to point out things to them, things like that. So now that we've added our screen sharing, I can kind of go over the spotlight over here and how to use it. So at the top, we have two different formats for toggling the way that these will show up on our stream. So first we have this right here where it shows them side by side. And then we have kind of a zoomed effect where if you were to maybe add a guest or you had multiple webcams and you wanted to kind of highlight people's faces, this might be a really good way to do that. You can have several different guests on here and then it will highlight their face, show the center of the video rather than showing all of it with the zoom out kind of like this. And then over in the spotlight items right here, we have some different options. So I can quickly make one of them full screen by selecting this little button on that specific item. So I can make my webcam full screen or I can go over and make the screen sharing full screen. But then I also have another option. Say I wanna have my screen sharing full screen, but I still wanna have the webcam down in the bottom corner. I can do that by selecting this little box right here. And when I do that, it'll show the screen share. So I can still show my browser. I can scroll through and everything, but down in the bottom right, you have my webcam. So I can still give you a reaction. I can show gestures in my hands, different things like that. I really like this format. I use it when I'm live streaming. I like that. So now that we've gone through the spotlight and how to change the layout and format of your stream, let's continue on with this toolbar at the bottom. After screen share down here, we have invite guest. And if I select that, now with the free version of Restream, you can invite up to six guests. With the paid version, up to 10. So all I need to do to invite someone and have them join my stream is simply copy this text, send it to them. I can send it either in like Facebook, email, a text message, whatever it is. Once they access that, they don't have to log in. It'll open up, they share their webcam, and then it, they'll show up over here in the right sidebar and they can join my stream. So now I'm gonna show you an example of what that looks like. So what I've done here is I've opened up another browser. So it kind of simulates what it will be like when a guest receives that link, opens it, and then joins your stream. So I'm gonna copy this and just paste it into the browser over here. Now, as you can see, it's gonna do the same thing, ask for access to the webcam. I'm gonna allow it. So as you can see, when it loads, once I give access to my camera, first it shows a preview up here so that your guest can see what the stream looks like. They can see you. They can also see what you're sharing, so they can comment on that. Then at the bottom, it shows my webcam, and this is just another webcam that I have. Then going back to my view right here, I can see that the guest has joined, and all I have to do to toggle them on is hit this little switch, and then as you can see, they join very quickly just like that. So really cool there, and I have the different layouts. So if I turn off my screen share, you can see this layout works very well for live streaming when you're doing an interview with a guest or just with webcams. And you can even do things like this. So I can have my browser up and then I have two guests at the bottom commenting on what we're going over in the browser. So you have a lot of different options within Restream. Going back to the view of the guest over here on the right, you, your guest also has the ability to share their screen. So if I select that, it'll come up in the Chrome browser and ask me what do I wanna share. And then when I share something in my view, again, it will show it under the guest right here and I can toggle that on. And then as you can see, we have me with my screen share and then my guest with their screen share as well. Very cool and versatile there. Another thing that the guest will be able to see over here on the right side, they'll be able to see the chat. So if you have any chat going on on Twitch or anything like that, that'll be visible to your guests so they can kind of interact with that as well, which is very cool. One more thing before we wrap up how to invite guests with Restream Live Studio. If you share this link with someone and maybe they don't have a computer, they can even access it on their cell phone in the browser and it'll work similar to this. They'll be able to use their webcam. They won't be able to share their screen, but they can still join your live stream using the camera on their phone. All right, so I've removed the guest and now we're back to Restream Studio here. The next option we have after invite guest is going to be play a local video. And this allows us to upload a video, an MP4 file, up to 150 megabytes right now. It might be bigger in the future, but that can be good for an intro, outro for your stream, and then maybe a video you wanna critique, something like that. So I'll go ahead and show you how to add a video. It's very easy. You just select open video. Then it'll bring up your file explorer on your computer. Select the video you wanna add. And then it will show up over here to the right of your preview in the spotlight. Now we can enable it right here and it'll start playing. And then we can use any of the other options to make it full screen or even include 
our webcam and whatever we're else we're sharing, such as our screen, in the bottom right of the video right here. So very cool that you can watch that. You can turn it on, turn it off, and share that with your viewers very quickly. All right, so after play a local video, we have settings down here, and this gives us the ability to change our audio input. So we can change the microphone on our computer if you have an external microphone. Restream also has audio processing built in. You can turn this on or off. So if you're having issues with your audio, you might want to turn that off. But this does echo canceling. It also does noise suppression, help with background noise, things like that. So I recommend trying that out before you turn it off. In addition to that, they have a little audio meter here so you can see if you're getting too loud and maybe you need to turn down your mic or talk a little bit softer or louder. After that, we can change which video camera input we're gonna be using. So if you have an external video camera, you would need to choose that there. And then finally, you can change the quality of your stream. By default, it'll be 720, but if you have a paid version, you can go up to 1080 full HD. All right, so that was the toolbar at the bottom. Now in Restream, we have some tabs over here to the right. So the first tab over here, we have chat, and this will show all the different chat messages that are coming in on any of the channels that you've added to your Restream account. So I had Twitch. So I'll go to my Twitch account, and you can kind of just see if I just send a message there, it'll show up in the chat box right here. And this shows not only the username, it also shows the platform. So as you can see the small Twitch icon there, but I also have an option to highlight these messages and display them on my stream. So if I get a good question or a really nice comment I wanna to share to all of my viewers across all the platforms, all I need to do is select show right here, and then it will bring it up and show it on my stream with the username and then also what they said in their comments. So that's really cool. It's a great way to highlight a message and then share it across for all of your viewers. At the bottom of the chat right here, you also have the ability to interact back and send a message all from the live studio. And by default, it'll go to all the available channels that it can, but if you wanna select just one specific channel, you can send it just to one of those by selecting the little drop down here. So if I send a message from here, it shows up in my chat in the sidebar. And then if I go to Twitch, I can see that it was sent from me onto my Twitch channel. So it's very cool. You can interact with all of your different channels if you add multiple channels here just from the chat box in the right side of Live Studio. So you don't have to leave to interact with your chat or anything. It's all right there. Next, we have captions. And this is where you can create a little caption to kind of advertise something or say something on your stream. So I'll select this one right here to show. And as you can see, it says subscribe now on YouTube. And then it also has my username. And these are very easy to create. All we need to do is go down here and we can see the primary text. And then you have the option to add the secondary text right here. And then just select add caption. It'll add, be added to the list of captions and then I can show it. And then this is great for interacting either for showing your different social media addresses or for asking questions or making comments on your stream. And this color down here for your captions and also the chats that you highlight can be customized to fit your brand as well. And I'll show you that over in the graphics tab. So let's go ahead and move over to the next tab over here on the right to graphics. So this would be first, if you have the free version of Restream, you will have a little Restream logo on your live stream, which I don't think looks that bad. It looks pretty good in my opinion. But if you have the professional version of Restream, you can add your own graphics there to add a logo, something like that to your stream. You can also change any of these while you're live streaming. In addition to that, you can add an overlay. So you can upload a custom low overlay and turn that on. And this is what that looks like. They have kind of an example in there that can be turned on even with the free version. And then also you can upload videos here. If you had multiple videos you wanted to play, maybe an intro, outro, things like that, you can upload those here and then play them during the stream. As you can see, it'll kind of look like that. So that was a nice countdown, maybe a countdown to your stream starting, something like that, pretty cool. Then under that, we have background. So if you have the layout like this, the background might be useful. You can turn these off entirely and just have a black background, or you can have your background be shown. This is gonna be the free background they allow you to have. We can also, if you have a professional version, upload custom backgrounds to fit your brand, things like that. After that, we have participant's name. And as you can see right here in my video, I have my name right here. This can be very useful if you have multiple guests come on to kind of show who's who. You can turn those on and off over here and also change the name by just adding it right here. And then finally, at the bottom of graphics, we have the ability to change this color that is shown in the captions and the chat by just selecting it. And then you can kind of 
move it around to change the color very quickly. And again, you can do that during your live stream as well. Next in the right sidebar, we have setup. And this will first allow us to configure the title and description for our live stream, which will then be pushed to the different channels we added. So I can add a channel title right here. So, so I have my title configured. Now I'll type in a description. Once I enter that in, all I need to do is select update all. And then it will update those titles across the destinations, which are shown in a list down here. So as you can see, I have four destinations. And then I can quickly see if these are enabled or not. So say you have several different live streaming platforms down here, but you only want to do a live stream to a handful of them. I can go through, turn them off, and only have the different channels that I actually want to live stream to be turned on. So for this stream, we'll test it with Twitch and YouTube alone, which is pretty cool. So maybe you have a Patreon where you're just going to live stream to a specific group on Facebook. You don't have to go through the process of removing all these. You can just turn them on and turn them off so that you're just live streaming to your Facebook group. In addition to that, if you want to customize the title of that, you can just select edit. And then for that specific destination, it'll edit the title. All right, so that's going to be all the different tools and different things you can configure and change within Restream Live Studio. To go live, it's very simple. All we need to do is select go live right above the preview on the right side right here, right here. It'll show connecting. And then over in the left side of the preview, it'll show live. Now, if I go to Twitch, you'll see the live stream start, it says live right here, and I'm now live on Twitch. I'm also live on YouTube, and I can select that, see that there, and you can see that I am streaming at 720, which is the quality that I selected in the settings of Live Studio. And you can also see here that it has the title and description that I configured in Restream Live Studio that was all pushed to YouTube automatically. Now to end my live stream, all I need to do is go up into the top right where I selected to go live and just select finish. Confirm I want to end my live stream and then it will end it right there and we're done. We are no longer live streaming. So now that we've finished our live stream, if you have one of the paid versions of Restream, over in the left sidebar, when I select this little option right here for more, over here you'll see recording. So if I select that, and this will show me all the past recordings I've done in the last 15 days. So it'll keep them for 15 days. Now this is really cool. They give you the ability to not only download the full video version of your live stream, but you can also do an audio version, which can be useful if you have a podcast. You could upload that to Spotify or a podcast network, and you don't have to do any editing with the file. Simply download the audio and then upload it. You're good to go. You can download an MP4 version of the recording, and then you also have the ability to play a preview of your live stream, which is pretty cool. In addition to that, you can delete them if you have several in here. Maybe you've been doing test live streams. You just want to remove some of the recordings you don't care about. You can delete that right there, and then it will be removed from the list. So that's a really cool feature. You can get these recordings and upload them either as podcast or maybe a YouTube video, and you don't have to do any editing or capturing of the record of the live stream you can do it automatically and then finally over in the left sidebar we can actually see analytics for our live stream so if we select that this gives us first a quick overview of how many streams you've done the average duration and stream time including your average viewers i've just done some test streams here so i don't have a lot of that data but you can go into your last session so your last live stream you could see your viewership throughout your live stream you can see everything from followers you can see trends in your chat, such as popular phrases and your top people chatting, which is very cool. And then you can also break it out by the different live streaming platforms that you're live streaming to. So you have a lot of data here that can help you grow as a streamer, gain more followers, and hopefully build on your experience of live streaming using Restream. All right, so that was a full overview and walkthrough of Restream Live Studio. Hopefully, after watching this video, you're ready to go and you can use all the amazing features that are included in this service. If you have any questions about this, leave a comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you'd like to see more Restream tutorial videos, check the links in the description. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing to my channel, Gaging Gadgets, for more gadget reviews and tech tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.